Hey there, it's Ella from the Spline team. Adding images to 3D objects can be a great way to customize them. You can quickly add textures, logo, text, and more to your designs, or details to make them look more realistic, custom-made, authentic, or sometimes even a little funny. Today, we're going to guide you through the basics of image layering and show you how you can use this to enhance and personalize your 3D designs. All right, let's go. You can import your images into Spline by simply dragging and dropping them into the app. You can add interactions or make animations with them directly. But to add an image onto an object, you need to use an image as a material. So let's start with this simple example. Let's create a Polaroid frame here, just by using two rectangles. And now I will add a second shape where our image is going to be placed. Now to add an image, all we need to do is select the shape and add a new material layer here in the material panel. And we are going to select the image layer. Now click on the layers thumbnail, and now we can upload our image. And now we just have to adjust the position and scale a bit, and that's it. but there are still a lot of settings that you can adjust, so let's explore a little more. Here in the image layer settings, wrapping allows you to decide how textures behave at edges, whether they repeat, stretch, or simply just cut off. You can choose clamp. This option extends the texture edges to the boundaries of the surface. Then there's repeat, which tiles the texture across the surface, repeating it both horizontally and vertically. And with mirror, which is similar to repeat, but each tile is mirrored, creating this symmetrical tilling effect. With sharpness, you can select between pixelated, crisp, and smooth to adjust the texture clarity. For scale, this changes the texture size on the model. An offset will move the texture's position on the surface of the model. And finally, with rotation, this just spins the texture around at a point, altering its angle on the model. Now, projections are something essential that we have to explore in this tutorial. Let's learn a little about the differences between them using different examples. For UV, this is the most flexible and commonly used method for texturing. It's great to use with complex shapes and models. Planar projection maps a texture onto a 3D model as if the texture is projected from a single direction. So when you select this option, you can go here and choose from a single axis and the side where you want to be projected can either be the front, back, or you can choose both. It's a good option if, for example, you want to place a different image on various sides. You can duplicate or create a new image layer on the same cube and then adjust the axis and side in each image layer to project a different image on each side of your cube. For spherical, this wraps the texture around the model as if it were a globe. It's commonly used for mapping textures on spherical or rounded objects. And cylindrical, this one is a great one to know, especially for those pop can mock-ups you might want to make. Um, this is best for cylindrical objects. So in the case of this can, I used a texture like this one, which is rectangular, and I selected cylindrical projection so that it covers my whole object. In fact, I created a collection of various designs and characters to later simply replace the image. Pretty cool, right? Another thing to keep in mind is you can always add more materials and effects over your image layers. 
You can add a matte cap layer and a rainbow layer to simulate a metallic and shiny effect on the can. Just add them over your image layer and adjust the settings and blend modes like I do here. You can change the opacity here to make it less intense and more realistic. And in the case of this bottle, we just simply added some various image layers and some different PNGs, and then again, just adjusted the position for each of them. You can also adjust the opacity a bit so that they integrate into the texture of the object a little better. And for the Tri-Planner, this projects textures from three directions and blends them. So this is pretty good for complex surfaces that don't have a clear orientation. Here we can compare the same textures to these, but with different projections. So you can find several templates that you can easily edit and add images to from the Spline Library. So let's start with this iPhone model. To access the library, click here, and now we can select our scene. I'm going to type in iPhone to find the iPhone model. Perfect. So this way you can bring any 3D element from the library to your file and use it in your projects. Let's select screen. And now you can click on this arrow to download the texture and use it as a template to create the design with the same dimensions when you're replacing the image. So I made this design to replace the image and done. Now we have this added to our iPhone. You can animate the image layer properties. So for example, you can adjust the position in different states to create an animation. So I'll create a new state and change the position. Now let's create that start event, adjust the state, and done. You can use other interactive events to trigger this animation like mouse down or mouse hover. You can add images as textures, but you can also add video. To add video, just create a video layer Here we have a cute little video of a kitten that will appear. This is our default video, and you can change it to any video you'd like. When adding a new video layer, a start event is automatically created with a video action, making your video autoplay once you go into that preview mode. You can change the event to another type like mouse up, mouse down, key up, or key down. With the video action, you can control if you want it to play, pause, or stop a video layer, as well as other properties like video, volume, delay, and loop. There are some incredible resources and 3D mockups in our Spline community that you can explore and remix. All right, that is the end of this tutorial. We hope you picked up some new skills and can now add some personal touches to your 3D objects in Spline using the image and video layer. With a few extra steps, you can add more interactivity and add more camera movement. And as always, you can export and integrate these designs with no coding onto your website, app projects, and even experience your designs in the Vision Pro. Let us know in the comments what else you want to learn. See you in the next one. Bye.